Welcome back to the third of remaking Undertale in, well, in Game Maker, of course, because <laughs> where else? Um, so today we're gonna do a little bit more because this is what we did last time, just for recapping. Just made the movement and the walls. And today we're gonna jump right into um, those bullet formations or stuff falling down and then you kind of dodge it. For now, I will just lay down the groundwork and then we will refine it then in another video. But for now, we just want to create, let's say, one pattern of things falling down. So spikes. But of course, you can just do it whenever you like. Alrighty, so let's get rid of that and just jump instantly into a few things. Let's organize. So let's say those walls. Do we need them? Not so much. And, for, and second of all, do we need them to be visible? Not either because they are now automatic so we just say like eh, <laughs> let's make them invisible and drop them into objects objects as our overworld this is not their place this is in i guess we call it the fight system or whatever you want to have so basically the whole thing and we just drop these guys in here and they're gone and then everything is looking definitely nicer do we need the hearts no also not bye bye you go so the next thing which we do need is a few things. So first of all, we need bullets to be dropped down. So let's say a bullet spike, a bullet butterfly and different kind of bullets, which the heart needs to dodge. So for example, here we just create one. And because I like uh, inheritance, we create another object, which is basically collecting all the bullets. And then, well, all of them will have something inherited and for now we can just assign a few sprites this is of course just for organizing so the parent is getting once again this neat little icon and it's pretty much gone we don't need it for now later on we will fill it but for now nothing and then uh, our bullet spike needs to have kind of an image because that would still look kind of silly so we just go under enemies bullets and then we can pick one of them here we just take the spike or whichever you like if you for example want to go with a tomato let's go wild with that i don't really care so this is the way that goes and now we need to create in our let's just get rid of this dude here in our playground here we need to have kind of a bullet hell mini game so stuff is getting spawned in so therefore we just create a bullet hell formation once again, it's a parent and it has, of course, children, which, for example, I would call, I don't know, bullet hell drop spikes. And because this dude is a parent as well, give him a nice little icon. So here for the parent and then into the parent, we drop the spike formation. So here, this is a child. Come on, this is a child and this is how that goes so first of all just a few things we will fill it out later on what kind of uh, values should the bullet formation have which all the children will inherit well one or two things which would be for example i don't know what kind of damage it is dealing this is a value which will be used later on let's say bullet damage of each spawn and then the bullet instance and for now, we don't have any besides the well, the spike. So we just set this as the default one so we don't get any errors. Nice and dandy. Now we can close this dude because we don't need him for now. And let's go into our bullet formation of our spikes. As you can see, inheritance is working. Awesome. Then we just say, hey, let's inherit some stuff because uh, we want to set it. And for now we need a way to spawn things. So for that we can actually use and abuse an alarm. Here I just set it to a few values. So for example, just um, have a variable, call it spawn time and then give it a random range between 15 and 30. So basically every quarter of a second to half a second we will spawn one thing or just do kind of an action in the alarm event zero so we just open that one up as well 
and for now nothing is in there no stuff is happening but of course we want to loop so we can just copy paste that stuff and say hey loop that and basically we just created a kind of a loop of an alarm which is just getting re-triggered all the time during this mini bullet hell thing now we want to do one thing which is well create bullets which are falling down so we just say like hey instance create mm, let's say layer then for now we don't have any values to set to we will later on do so and i'll just go zero zero uh, and then uh, the same layer because we are lazy and then what do we want to spawn well the saved uh, bullet instance which we had in here so we can just take that over and put it here it's kind of redundant it's the same code but once let's say you have more multiple bullet formations so one is for example for falling down st stuff one is for a ring one is for some wave patterns and god knows what then this bullet instance it's always going to be something different for now it's just you know our spike and we can kind of close that and maybe you want to customize it a little bit because hey that's actually not a bad idea and here we do one thing which is um, putting those brackets in between this is a thing which uh, game maker um, no 2.3 or one of the earlier versions didn't have so basically you can just input some structs in there and the beauty of it that the stuff is getting applied instantly so normally what i do in my video tutorials i just say va i don't know bullets and then set the bullet and then say sprite index so let's say something like this then the information or the command will just would be just done in one step so basically one frame we're already missing but if you want to do it instantly we do it in here so what do we want to input instantly into our um, new bullet well we want to give it some gravity fall down dude so gravity and then what kind of gravity do we want to have i don't know let's say 0 0.3 then what else for now gravity would be saying like hey this thing is like to the right eh, not what we want so we say gravity direction let's say 270 this is the direction downwards which does make sense <laughs> at least for something which is falling uh, down and then the last thing which we want to do is image x scale this is optional you don't have to do that but let's say um you want to make these things a little bit smaller smaller bigger or whatever then we just you know give those informations instantly and it will instantly be like this and for now it's actually working pretty decent so we don't need to do a lot also but our bullet needs to have a specific damage value inside so for example here we don't have that here we have that here as a kind of value for now it's just one so it doesn't make any change a uh, change for now but we want to uh, still pass that in so damage and as you can see uh, it's just telling me hey it's not set so we have to do that as well so we just say hey and go into our bullet parent and as you can see it's empty and now we just set it to zero or one it doesn't really matter boom and then um, this value is getting overwritten each time because sometimes maybe attacks are stronger so they just delete i don't know 1.5 um health or three or five or six so here we have this set and for now this is working pretty nice so we are just spawning one of those guys each mm, one quarter to half a second that's that's great but one thing we need to align it to we want to align it to a specific place so we need to pick kind of an x position where we want to spawn it so va pick x and then we just say random range 
or I run in range. It depends how you want to have that. Random range, here we go. At what? Well, at the bounding box. Left to the bounding box. Right, so here is a position between those two and then we have one thing falling down. So we just say like action box. And hopefully you can guess what comes next. Bounding box left. And then um, maybe we want to have kind of kind of a mini buffer, so we don't have we don't want to spawn it. Let's say here at the corner, maybe just a little bit to the right, and here a little bit to the left. So we just say I don't know five pixels or, or God knows what. This is then of course optional. Say plus five, and between what? Well, action box, bounding box, right, and then here minus five because we want to keep in that range so easy peasy so we just say like hey pick one of those guys here boom and then what kind of why do we want to have well also kind of easy well we just say also the bounding box of <laughs> our action thing but now at the top bounding box top and then let's say minus mm, 10 20 Let's go 20, something like this. And now just for testing, let's put the drop spikes thing into the game just for testing and see if it works. And as you can see, it does work. And of course the speed is hilariously fast. So maybe <laughs> I should be doing that. But as you can see, it's looping. Of course we haven't put a stop to it and boom. This is the way that goes a little bit too fast in my opinion. So let's just correct that. What kind of values did I put in here? They were, they were completely wrong. So gravity 0 0.3. Ah, one zero more. And now this will definitely look better. And then we are pretty much done with this video tutorial. As you can see, ah, much nicer. And they, as, as you can see, not spawning completely to the left, not spawning completely to the right, just a little bit buffer. On the left and right, uh, left and right side, kind of as a padding, and then as you can see, it works. But for now, it's not functional; nothing is happening. But we created our first start of the mini game of the mini bullet hell, and this is what we're gonna develop uh, in the next video tutorial on remaking Undertale. So that was it then from my side. Have a good one. One up indie.